there. Welcome to the News and Nepal Television. I am Rujina Rai, first starting with the headlines. Ruling parties of KCML Chair Oli on the Alliance's coordinator of the Alliance also discussed government entry experiences ceiling cold with a gradual fall in the mercury. Hospitals overwhelmed with the patients are suffering from cold-related ailments. Ten killed after a fire broke out in a casino located at the border town of Phuket of Thailand. At least 30 others injured because of the fire yet to be known. And Pokhara Avengers locking horns with the Biratnagar Super Kings in the ongoing match of Nepal T20 League. Janakpur Royals to meet a foul Uni West United in the other match. Welcome back. Now we have the news in details. The meeting of uh, ruling political parties uh, concluded a short while ago at the Prime Minister's official residence in Balwata. The meeting of the seven-party ruling coalition has decided to bring the government's common minimum program within five days. The meeting held at the Prime Minister's official residence, Balwata has also decided to appoint CPN UML Chairman K.P. Oli as the coordinator of the ruling alliance. Her minister, Ravi Lamishani, said that the leaders discussed about bringing the common a minimum program of the government within five days. The government led by Prime Minister Puspa Kamal Dahal Prachanda has the support of seven parties including Mao Center, CPN UML, Ras Nagarik Mukti Party. The newly elected members of the Gandagi Provincial Assembly are taking the oath of office and secrecy today. The swearing-in will take place on Today afternoon, senior most member of the Provincial Assembly, Mitralal Basyal, will administer the oath. A 65-year-old was sworn in by Province Chief Prithvi Man Guring on Wednesday. In the 60-member Provincial Assembly, Nepali Congress has 27 seats, CPNUML 22, Maoist Centre 8, Rashtriya Prasadantra Party 2 and United Socialist 1 seat. The country is experiencing chilling cold with a gradual fall in the mercury for the past few days. The maximum temperature of the country has also started falling along with the minimum temperature the weather forecast forecasting division with the onset of extreme cold winter denizens of high hilly regions and mountainous regions too are facing havoc and forced to leave the village locals are forced to leave the village for the four months of november december january and february due to severe winters and heavy snowfall thick fog also has blanketed Parts of far west region, including Kailali and Kanchanpur, which are compounded by the cold wave. According to the weather forecast division, many places in West Tharai, including Kailali and Kanchanpur, have been affected by fog, and the visibility in Dhangari has been zero recently. The division has advised to take precautions as the daily life of Kailali continues to be affected due to fog, storm, and cold wave. Since reaching hospitals for treatment, we have more updates on the side. Do stay tuned. A short break. Welcome back. You are on Nepal Television News. Now we have updates from International Front. At least 10 people have been killed in a fire at a Cambodian hotel casino on the border with Thailand. Police say the blaze broke out at the Grand Diamond City Hotel Casino in the border town of Hopet at around 11.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Around 400 people were inside the buildings onto the border, local media reports. Authorities are still working to determine the cause of the fire. The U.S. has become the latest country to impose COVID testing on visitors from China after Beijing announced it would reopen borders next week. Italy, Japan, Taiwan and India also announced mandatory tests, but Australia and the U.K. said there were no new rules for travelers from China. After three years of being close to the world, China will let people travel more freely from 8 January, but the country's ongoing COVID surge has 
has sparked awareness. Hospitals in major Chinese cities are overwhelmed and residents are struggling to find basic medicines, according to reports. Countries. Prosecutor General Andrea Kostin told the Associated Press that called Russia's deliberate targeting of Ukraine's essential utilities is another act of genocide, the most heinous of war crimes. It's been three weeks since families stopped having electricity and water forcing them to rely on fire-resistant bricks to keep the temperature bearable in the house. Russia shows no sign of slowing down slowing down its attacks on Ukraine's energy grid. The World Health Organization has estimated that between 2 to 3 million Ukrainians will leave their homes this winter in search of warmth and safety. We have more international headliners on the side of short break. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Now the remaining international headliners. Every year, Venezuela's socialist government hands out thousands of Christmas presents to the nation's poorest children, including bicycles, Barbie dolls, and plastic trucks imported from China. This holiday season, officials added a new item to their list, an action figure with red tights, a blue cap, and a big mustache that fights the U.S. empire and is modeled after President Nicolas Maduro. The character goes by the name of Super Bigoti due to its a thick black that resembles Venezuelan's opposition leaders, who is the government blames for the U.S. sanctions that has also affected the nation's economy. But some Venezuelans describe that the toys are a dangerous waste of money that instead should be spent on electricity and better wages for new teachers. Days before the arrival of 2023, a group of Peruvian salmons performed rituals on a hilltop outside Lima to make their annual prediction and wish good fortune for the coming year. Felix Manuel Roldan, who call, calls himself the Peruvian salmon, drank the traditional psychedelic brew of Ayahuasca before making his prediction. Roldan said the social group made a plea to end the conflict in Ukraine and wished good luck to the Argentina football team after obtaining the World Cup championship. To the more updates before that, let's have a quick look into the highlights of the site. Moving on to sports now. Biratnagar Super Kings has defeated Pokhara Avengers by eight wickets in the match held under the Nepal T20 Cricket League. In the first match of the day, winning the toss, Pokhara scored 135 runs with loss of six wickets in the stipulated 20 overs. Biratnagar, that was chasing the target of 136 runs, garnered 138 runs, losing two wickets with eight balls remaining. In the other match of the day, slated to kick off at 1 p.m. Nagpur Royals will lock hands with the Far West United at a TU Cricket Ground. Six of franchise teams are participating in the competition. The 22nd edition of the Aharara Gold Cup football competition is beginning today. The competition will be an international inter-club invitational where 10 teams including three divisional clubs, local clubs, organizer club and one foreign team from Bhutan. Sahara club cup holder team will bag 1.2 million rupees while the runner-up will get cash reward of 600,000 rupees. We are almost at the end of this news bulletin, but before we say goodbye, quick reminders of the top stories. Ruling parties decided to bring the government's common minimum program within five days. Also peak UML Chair Oli as the alliance's coordinator. 
Daily life gripped as the country experiences chilling cold with a gradual fall in the mercury. Hospitals overwhelmed with patients suffering from cold and related ailments. Ten killed after a fire broke out in a casino located on the border town of Polpet of Thailand. At least 30 other injured because of the first match of the Nepali T20 League. Janakpur rolls to meet Far West United in other maths. This is all we have for this moment. Until our next, next bulletin, goodbye and namaste.